<clears throat> All right, what's going on, guys? Oh, fuck. Do I have a drink? This video, I hope, is not as long as my usual fucking shit. Because <laughs> I only want to talk for maybe 30 minutes or an hour, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, before I start ranting away, remember... Mostly just my opinion here. Mostly uh, just a, you know, regular average Joe human reaction to what I'm going to be talking about here. I'm not perfect. Probably get some stuff wrong. Almost guaranteed to get stuff wrong. Don't be too mad at me. It's just the way I feel. If you feel differently, um, odds are that's perfectly okay. So, uh, yeah, let's start talking about... Uh, I always say that, let's. People always say that, let's. That always bugs me. Because we are not doing anything. You're sitting there listening to me. That's what this video is. So, yeah, okay. So, I am going to talk about the new Halo Infinite campaign gameplay demo thing that we just saw. Um, yeah. Um... All right. So I thought the video was, uh, what was it, like eight minutes long, something like that? I thought it was pretty meh. I'd give it, I'd give it somewhere around a four or a five out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, you know. Uh, oh, uh, real quick, I wanted to say some nice words for Michael Brooks. If you guys don't know who Michael Brooks is, he's the co-host of uh, uh, The Majority Report with Sam Cedar, and he also had his own show, The Michael Brooks Show. And, uh, yeah, he was just a really great guy, uh, really smart, really uh, passionate, really nice, you know. Um, be ruthless with systems, be kind to people was a message he preached, you know. And uh, that's awesome, you know. In, in life and in death, he continues to bring folks together peacefully. And that's something that a lot of us only wish we could accomplish in our lives. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll never forget the guy, you know. Like, I listen to him basically every other day, you know. He changed my life. He changed millions of people's lives in positive ways, not negative ways. Uh, yeah. That guy's fucking awesome. Okay. Moving on to Halo shit. Right. Um, gonna give my thoughts here. Let's, uh, let's start with the good. Right? Well, well, actually, it, it's kind of hard to just throw things out there as either good things or bad things, you know, right? When you're critiquing a piece of uh, entertainment or whatever, right? Um, sometimes you got something that you think is good but needs work. Other times you got something that you think is bad and should be fucking done away with entirely. Uh, sometimes you're not even fucking sure how to feel about a certain something. And a lot of the time, you know, in this case, the game's not even fucking out yet. So we can only judge so much. We can't give a 100% as of right now. The game is not out, and we haven't played through it to a large degree yet. And even then, no one's ever 100% master of judging a piece of media, you know? No piece of uh, entertainment is perfect, and no human being is perfect. So don't take reviews completely seriously, you know? That includes me. Don't take me completely seriously, okay, guys? That's that's called fanboying. You don't want to fanboy it up. Not too much, anyway. Some people go to ridiculous lengths, you know? Like, I've seen 343 fanboys fanboy it up so much that they defend the wallet rape microtransaction bullshit. Like, that is ridiculous, yeah? Like, wow, they got you by the balls, fanboy. Like, you are <laughs> not, not even defending the game anymore, but rather corporate greed. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not even talking about games anymore at that point. Like, you're just fucking out of there. 
So, yeah, um, anyway, um, but yeah, uh, sometimes you're not even sure how, how you honestly feel about a certain something in a game, and a lot of the time your opinion on it might transform, you know, as you grow older and learn more and your tastes vary and change over time. Shit can get kind of complicated, you know. Um, I, I know many of The Last of Us 2 people, uh, that game's been out for like over a, a month now, and uh, people are still struggling to find out how they feel about the game, since it's so deep on so many levels, but also not so deep on so many levels. But also, it's a weird game that's like this combo of book, movie, and video game all rolled into one instead of just one game. So, like... Bleh. <laughs> yeah, anyways, just listen to me talk about it, I guess, uh, this Halo Infinite trailer, okay? Um, I overall didn't like it more than I liked it. Let's just leave that as my overall summary, and uh, now I'll get into the details. Um, all right, so uh, the trailer starts off, right, with a random marine space guy that we're supposed to care about, I guess. He's flying down uh, his Pelican or aircraft or whatever to the busted up ring in the last trailer with Chief right behind him, you know? Right? <clears throat> uh, re real quick, fellas, uh, apologies on me not being 100% on what the fuck is up with the storyline, okay? That's partly to blame for me not giving a fuck about the lore because it's largely poorly thought out and written by 343, who constantly disappoints me as a Halo fan, so I'm just sort of out of the loop, okay? Like, I never even got an Xbox One, all right? I barely played Halo 5 at my buddy Glenn's. <laughs> like, you gotta forgive me, okay? Like, uh, I'm not the greatest critique here, critic here. Um, I'm, I'm a great critic of the Bungie Halo games. I live and breathe Bungie Halo games. Played the Bungie Halo game, uh, played the Bungie Halo games, like, more than any other fucking video game ever, ever, you know, like, that's me, so, 343, like, you gotta understand my background with them, I got Halo 4, hoping it would be great, liked it at first, but then started to notice how lesser quality it is than Halo 3 or, or Reach, and, uh, yeah, um, I dug, uh, the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary thing that came out in 2011, you know, but, yeah, uh, then I started, after Halo 4, I started to see a dip in quality and, and just care and passion for the franchise from 343. And uh, then, you know, of course, when MCC came out, it was a broken mess. And then Halo 5 was filled with misleading bullshit and was a letdown on so many areas. The game launched unfinished and it had microtransaction bullshit. Yeah, that's when I was just like, okay, Halo's pretty dead to me. At least at least it's future. I'll just play the old shit on my 360. No big deal. And that's pretty much how I've been ever since. All right. So, yeah. Um, so fucking excuse me for not buying into every little side story that's not in the main game so that I can un better understand the main plots in these main Halo games. Like, that's something that really sucks. In my opinion, that's a big fucking problem about 343. Expecting the fans... Uh, to be up to speed on the main Halo game storylines from 343, only if you fucking read the most recent comics, books, short films, and all this shit, you know? Pain in the ass, all this little crap just to fucking be in the loop on what the fuck is going on in the new big fucking game that's coming out. I think that's annoying. The story should be simple enough and straightforward enough that people can just kind of jump in and understand what's up. And 343 kind of doesn't really do that, you know? Like, I re remember, even with Halo 4, like, the Didact was such a mystery character in so many ways, and it's like, oh, you gotta read this book, and blah, 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 blah. And then I, I find out that, like, in, in the lore, he, the Didact needs to, like, bathe in some kind of mineral bath, like, for a few days after he awakens from his slumber. But in the game, he awakens from his slumber, and then he, he's instantly powerful. He didn't have to fucking rest for a few days. No. Like, so... Like, they're not even consistent, game and then outside game lore, you know? Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's dumb. It's not very well thought out. It's clearly being made up as they go. And, and, and you could even say similar things about the Bungie Halo storyline. Yeah, that's fair, but 
I, I'd still argue that they did a better job than what 343 is doing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, um, uh, um, what was I saying? Yeah, that's a pain in the ass to have to go outside of the game and and look up lore and shit like that, it's making it more complicated than it has to be. And a lot of these stories are poorly written, like I said, and a lot of little short films and movies are badly acted out. And uh, like, like what Halo comic or movie or book or whatever is fucking amazing. <laughs> Nothing lately. <laughs> Let's get real, right? Anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, mm, um, like, like, how would you feel if, like, Infinity War Part 1, the movie, you know, um, was just, like, a little side comic book thing that nobody gives a fuck about that you would have to read in order to understand Endgame, the big movie, you know? Like, how would you feel about that? Like, if Infinity War Part 1 was a book that you had to read and then Endgame was the movie afterward, you know? And you wouldn't understand anything unless you read the book Infinity War. How would you feel about that? Like... Like, most folks would be scratching their fucking heads like crazy trying to figure out what the fuck is up, you know? Like, it's a good thing that they were both movies, you know? Like, keep it consistent and simple for the audience to get their fucking brain wrapped around, you know? Uh, that's just how I feel. feel. Feel free to disagree or whatever, but I think making it easier for people to understand what the fuck is going on is nice, and 343 doesn't really do that, because... They kind of are greedy assholes, and they want you to buy up all this extra Halo side shit, you know? And even then, like, if you if you compile all the lore and stuff like that, and all the books and comics and shit, and then compare it to the games, you'll still find a lot of plot hole stuff and stuff that doesn't really add up and stuff that contradicts things. And It's not very well written. It's pretty mediocre, to be honest. It's mediocre science fiction. It's really not that great. And like I've always said, you know, like, the Halo's origin, like, when it was first created... It's a little bit of, like, Spartan soldiers from Greek mythology. It's a little bit of Bible stuff. It's a little bit of, uh, like, James Cameron's aliens and Predator and some sort of semi-Starcraft-esque themes, you know? It's all kind of compiled, and that's basically what Halo is. It's not very original. It's kind of just taking a lot of other things and rolling with it. Anyway, uh... I probably pissed off a lot of hardcore Halo lore fans by saying that just now, but... <laughs> what? It's pretty true what I just said. Anyway, um... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, that that's me right now in regards to Halo Infinite's story. Like, who's the brute at the end? What the fuck happened to that uh, Atriox guy or whatever his name was from Halo Wars 2, you know? I mean... I watched the little movies on YouTube that sum up the story of Halo Wars 2, and if I can remember correctly, Atriarch or whatever his name is, uh, I, sorry, I can't remember that much because I don't care that much, um, but a, a, ever since I saw like the three badass Spartans in that game, Douglas and Jerome and uh, Kelly, I don't know her fucking name. Uh, <laughs> I think I got it kind of wrong there. But anyway, those three Spartans, right? If I'm, if I'm, Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, all three of them are Spartan 2s, right? And Spartan 2s are like the most old-school badass of the badass Spartans. Like only the strongest people involved in the Spartan 2 program were able to survive and were lucky enough to become like the most super of super soldiers. Like Spartan 3s aren't as badass, and Spartan 4s are pretty badass, but still not quite as badass as Spartan 2s. Like... Like, Spartan 2s are like a kind of a fluke, you know, and those who survive the program are just like the most badass, physically badass, mentally badass human beings or whatever, something like that. Anyway, so these are three Spartan 2s, and I, I just hated that fucking scene when you first get introduced to Atriox in uh, Halo Wars 2. I couldn't stand it. Like, it was so badly done. Uh, let me explain. I, I did a video on it uh, like a year or two ago, um, but, you know, if you don't want to look up that video, I know I don't feel like doing it. Uh, <laughs> I'll just explain it right now. Um, like, basically, when I saw that scene, I was 
kind of already done caring about this new Atriarchs guy, you know? Th that scene had all these, like, dark, quick cuts in the action. So, like, you know, th like, animation people do this to cut back on actually making the fight look cool and detailed, you know? Kind of like, uh, you know, Game of Thrones, the final season, episode uh, three or whatever, the, the big fight against the Night King. It's all dark and filled with quick cuts and shit. That, that it's cheaper for them to do it that way. That's why they did it that way. And as a result, yeah, they save a little money, but fucking the audience, us, we, we have a hard time telling what the fuck is going on. We don't get to see very clearly the action being portrayed, you know? Like, that sucks. And that's kind of what they did here. Um, yeah, but you got three Spartan II badasses sneaking into this derelict area. It's dark. They got their flashlights on. They got their motion trackers. What kind of Spartan doesn't have motion trackers and whatnot? And they get jumped by Atriox, you know? Like, like How? How is that big motherfucker that sneaky? He just sort of appears right in front of them, for fuck's sake. You know, like, poof, I'm here, and he grabs one of the Spartans. You know, like, like was he standing there the whole fucking time, and these dumbass Spartans just walked into him, Mr. Magoo style? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, also, why would he choose to fight all three of them by himself? He's the leader of a military group. He's an important, like, political figure and military figure. Him risking his life like that is pretty fucking dumb, you know? Like, I get that he's a badass, sure, but this is fucking stupid, you know? And I get that the whole scene was trying to make the villain seem super strong and intimidating and difficult to deal with, but uh, it was done in a very stupid way that leaves me laughing and just scratching my head, you know? Like, it wasn't very intimidating by the dude, you know? Like, uh. <laughs> especially after those goofy uh, uh, car and airplane commercials for Halo Wars 2. I'm not going to lie. Like, Halo Wars 2 sucked in a lot of ways, but those live-action commercials, they fucking made me laugh my ass off. I enjoyed that shit. Um, and it's also funny how that Captain Cutter guy looks a lot fucking younger in the second game. They got a completely different, like, visual actor and everything. Like, that that's weird. <laughs> but whatever. The game sold like shit. Um, like, Halo Wars 1 already came with Flood in the game on the disc. And then here comes Part 2, which charges you motherfuckers for DLC to get the Flood. What the fuck? That's lame, dude. The season pass for Halo Wars 2 at launch didn't even cover that shit. Like, really, 343? Way to shit on your most loyal fans <laughs> who are willing to pay top dollar, you know, at launch. Like, But, of course, you microtransaction-pushing dickheads would do that, right? Anyways, uh, back to talking about Halo Infinite microtransactions. Yeah, right. Um... So we got the random marine guy and the chief flying down to the ring, only to be blasted down by turrets, right? Once they, uh, they crash land, you know, they take their sweet time with some emotional banter about what they should do next, you know? And they spend like a minute going back and forth. You would think, oh shit, this is an emergency situation. Get the guns and let's get the fuck out of here and kick some ass and shoot our way out. Do whatever we can to survive. They just shot us the fuck down. We're, we're lucky we didn't die. Let's fucking move. But no, the reaction isn't like that. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I guess the enemy cubbies too. I, I guess they were in no rush to get down to the crash site and kill the intruders, right? Or whatever. See, this bugs me, because it, it's been five years since we've seen the Chief come back in, in a big new adventure ever since Halo 5, right? And I was hoping his return would be more epic and whatnot. Like, don't get me wrong, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. I'm not exactly hyped to see the Chief again, even though he's one of my favorite video game characters, you know? So, that sucked. Personally, I think they could have done a better job with his return. I, I even think his return in Halo 4... Um, because that was another time where we haven't really seen the Chief for five years, and the, then Halo 4 comes along, and he's back. And even that, I thought, was more impressive, but still not very good. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like 343 just gets worse and worse, slowly but surely. 
You know, I honestly feel like 343 wasn't that bad when they first started. Like I said, Halo 4, okay, their first big game, it's not the greatest, but it's their first shot. Give them a chance. And it's a decent enough game, I guess, especially if you're kind of a COD kid. And uh, that remaster they did, Halo 1 Anniversary in 2011, I thought that was well done enough, you know. It wasn't $60, it was only 40 and it gave Reach some DLC. And, yeah, I dug that. I did. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was fine that they did that. But, yeah, around the time of MCC and whatnot and the coming of Xbox One, <laughs> yeah, seems to have been nothing but downhill, downhill, downhill ever since. Anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, uh, you know what I really liked? When we beat Halo 1 for the first time back in the day, and we were just, like, blown away by how amazing that whole fucking adventure was, and we just couldn't wait for a fucking sequel, you know? And then for a while, we got nothing until they hit us with the sick fucking Halo 2 trailer where Chief jumps out into outer space, you know? After after seeing, you know, this fight going down on on the home planet, Earth, you know? Now that was a fucking epic way of showing the fans that the Chief is back and ready to womp some ass. You know, like, <laughs> great. What if you miss? I won't. You know, that's fucking awesome shit, you know? And, and, and like, the music in the trailer, Marty O'Donnell fucking killed it, you know? Like, the music was great. It started off mysterious, subtle, and as they show Chief moving along in the spaceship, he grabs that gun off the wall, gets in the fucking elevator, you know? And... While they're showing you this, and the graphics were, like, amazing at the time, you know, and, and uh, the screen constantly cuts to black, showing a computer screen, listing off his amazing accomplishments from the last game, and eventually it finally lists a part that says, Saving the Planet in Progress, or something like that. And right when it shows you in progress, bam, the fucking music kicks in to fucking overdrive, and your body is ready, you know, like... It's fucking awesome, and you're 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 fucking ready to save Earth from alien scumbags. You know, like it's just the most awesome feeling ever. I want to watch the trailer right now for Halo Two. That fucking badass. I remember feeling like I just couldn't wait for that fucking game. You know, and I, I felt that way pretty much about every Bungie Halo game. You know, getting those kinds of goosebumps just thinking about it. You know, like I'll never forget that shit. But this Halo Infinite stuff with the Chief, though, meh, eh, you know, like, they don't do a good as job as Bungie did when it came to making the Chief a badass, but it really feels like they don't care about trying that hard with the story or the, or the franchise as a whole. It just feels kind of like 343 just wants to milk what's left of this fucking franchise, and that sucks. Doesn't feel like they really care, and not like... Not like a lot of us fans do, you know? And I know a lot of people would say that you're not a real fan. You're not buying their new games. And it's like, fuck you, dude. I've bought plenty of Halo merch. I've probably given the Halo franchise and Microsoft and Bungie and and what is now 343 in charge of the franchise hundreds of dollars, thousands in some cases. Like, give me a break, man. Just because I don't like the new shit doesn't mean I'm not a real fan, okay? Like, like come on. Let's get real. Like, you're not supposed to just be a sheep and blindly go with whatever trash they put out there. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a Silent Hill fan, could you honestly just sit there and be like, yeah, what Konami's doing with that franchise right now is genius. <laughs> Can you really say that? Like, fuck off, man. Come on. We have every right to complain when shit's not going our way, right? Come on. Like, you might not agree with me, but I should be allowed to complain. I shouldn't be told to shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, like, and don't get me wrong, I get it. In the past, I was a dick, and I would tell 343 fanboys to shut the fuck up and stop voicing their opinions a lot to, like, an authoritarian dick. And for that, I'm sorry. I was childish and arrogant and acting like a frustrated dick. And, yeah, in the past, I've been like that. I'm trying real hard to not do that and... I just want everybody to try that as well, you know? Whew. Anyway, um, so, uh, um, so yeah, after the little banter that the chief and uh, this marine guy um, 
pole here. Uh, you're finally allowed to play as chief, right, and step outside of the back of the ship, you know. And uh, that's when the gameplay kicks in. And I've watched this trailer like three times now to see if I missed stuff, you know. But each time that I watch, I just notice more crap that kind of bugged me and hardly anything that that uh, made me like what I was seeing. And uh, so, yeah, the player, he uh, gets out of the ship, pulls out his AR, he goes to the right, and there's some grunts, you know, and he shoots him to death with the AR. And it's like the weakest sounding AR I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, whatever, though. And the visuals are clearly not as good as the visuals we got with uh, the very first trailer and that last one with the uh, Marine guy, you know. <clears throat> so that kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, worse yet, um, after he smokes those grunts, uh, player playing, right, he, he looks up and he sees a fairly under-detailed looking phantom that's kind of jostling around in a weird manner a little bit. They might want to fix that to make it look more fluid as it flies through the sky because it kind of looked like it was in a jerking kind of motion a little bit. It wasn't that bad, but it didn't look completely right. And I think I've seen it look better in previous Halo games, particularly the Bungie Halo games. So, yeah, fix that shit, please, you know. Um, I also noticed that uh, around the time that the player starts looking up at the Phantom, the grass in the little water there starts to go poof, you know. Like, textures disappearing and failing to load on time. Just fucking great. <laughs> okay. Then the player gets into the hog, and it sounds kind of like a Honda or something. It kind of sounds like like a weak car instead of a fucking truck, you know? And I prefer it to sound a little more powerful, but whatever, you know? At least the physics, they seemed all right, I guess, you know? I could be wrong. Maybe I need to check that again. But it seemed like the driving mechanics and the physics and... All that seemed pretty top notch, I'd argue. So I, I don't, I don't think I have a problem with that. Good job there. Uh, he starts driving, and that's uh, when I finally started to really notice the textures of the overworld in the backgrounds and, and uh, foreground, sort of loading in super late, especially in the background. It was pretty bad at times, and I saw uh, grass, hills, and fog just go poof left and right in this trailer. You know, like, and, and, and the frame rate. It ran great during cutscenes and in small areas. I fucking love it, you know? Like Halo 5 uh, frame rate shit, you know? That's beautiful. That's something Halo 5 got really well is the frame rate. Well, well, aside from Halo 5 and Forge and Theater, sometimes the frame rate would get shit, to be honest. But in, like, the main campaign and most of the multiplayer, like, the frame rate is great in Halo 5. I can say that about Halo 5. I know I shit on that game all the time, but... Frame rate is pretty top notch, uh, but in this the frame rate mostly top notch, yeah. But ooh, uh, not a good look for your little demo here, you know. Not not the greatest look, and I kind of expect better, especially in today's modern age, you know. Like we got games that have great frame rates and visuals, like Witcher Three, which came out in two thousand fucking fifteen. You know, and we're five years past that, man. And we got new fucking hardware coming out here. You know, like, we expect better. And honestly, a lot of what I've seen in this video kind of looks worse than Destiny 1 in 2014, man. Like, fuck. That's disappointing. Like, some things look better, but some things did kind of look not even as good as that game. So... That kind of leads me to go, fuck! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ugh. Um, yeah, but yeah, you could totally tell that the frames were fucked in a lot of areas. Which really makes me worry about how the game will really run like shit when you're playing split screen. Or playing this game on like a weaker PC or an older Xbox One model or something like that. Like, that seems troubling. Now, now, look, guys. One of my favorite games ever is Breath of the Wild. And one of my few complaints about Breath of the Wild is its frame rate and laggy loading of textures in certain areas of the game. But, but since that game is just so fucking amazing in so many other ways, I can kind of forgive it. And it's not, you know, like, destroying the game for me. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, also Breath of the Wild... In all fairness, man, that game, it showed us gameplay uh, close to like a year before launch. 
Halo Infinite has been in the works for five years, and it's going to fucking launch in like three to four months from now, and they just now finally got around to showing us gameplay for the first time. Like, what the fuck, man? Why so late, guys? Jeez. I know there's the COVID and everything, but five years. And oh, it, it's hard to be nice to you assholes because you've been fucking over the franchise pretty largely in a lot of ways for a fucking decade now. <laughs> like, that's, um, whee, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I like it when developers show us how the game is coming along over the course of years after it launches, you know? Like, I appreciate that. Um, uh, we've been in so much fucking darkness when it comes to Halo Infinite, you know? Like, it's not a good sign. Usually this sign means that the game's creation is going poorly in a lot of areas. Like, I hope I'm wrong. We'll see when it actually launches, I guess. But, you know. Like I said, 343 has failed us so hard over the past decade in so many ways. Like, Halo 4 and its Call of Duty ripoff bullshit. Like, and just about everything in that game felt downgraded from what we got from the past Bungie Halo games. Then the MCC launched like ass and still has problems to this day. Halo fucking 5 and Halo Wars 2 launching unfinished with microtransaction bullshit. It's really fucking lame, you know? Just fucking saying, man. I, so I, I want 343 to start making up for that, you know? And it doesn't seem like this is it, Chief. <laughs> with Halo Infinite, doesn't seem like this is it. This game seems like it cares more about money making than it does at actually giving us a quality game. And yes, I know, I know, it's always about the fucking money, duh. But can't we get a fucking good game for our money? Just saying, when money leaves my wallet, I kind of like there to be a good fucking reason for it. Ding, ding. You know, when a game tries to play me like a sucker instead of a fucking gamer, I got to put my foot down, you know. Oh, what's this? You cut beloved content like Playable Elites, Split Screen, and launch the game unfinished without having Forge or Big Team Battle or Firefight, etc., etc. But you have dirty-ass microtransactions to pressure me into spending way fucking more? Fuck you! Fuck you, man! Fuck you, 343! That's my fucking reaction when I see shit like that. It's only natural. Come on! Like... You see the sales numbers. You see the online player activity. You see the review scores. Add all this up. Read the room, motherfuckers. You're doing an overall worse job than Bungie did with this franchise. Fucking wake up. That's overall the general consensus. And that's a fact. I know opinions vary, but when you gather up all the opinions, most of them lean towards liking the Bungie Halo days more. That's a fact. Anyway, when, when a game tries to make, uh, you know, a sucker out of you instead of a gamer, that it's... Uh, we really didn't have to put up with this level of fuckery with the bungee halos from 2001 to 2010. I'm just fucking saying. Anyways, back, back to the trailer. After some frame rate uh, lag and texture loading failure from driving around for a few seconds, uh, another battle happens. And you get to see some pistol action. Now, real quick, before I talk about the pistol, I want to say something that I think is a thing. Uh, I noticed in the trailer, the very first Halo Infinite trailer, they showed, like, these gorgeous vistas of the land of the Halo ring and all that stuff. It looked great. But I noticed in this gameplay trailer that we just saw a few days ago, there's all this, like, artificial metal binding wall crap laid out everywhere against the walls of everything like it's it feels like a quarter or one third of everything you're looking at is these big flat forerunner type walls and they're plain looking and i think the reason for that is the game's uh engine runs better when there's less detail so you got these big plain looking pillars that lack detail to help the game run better and i think they're everywhere to to help do that and seeing that and seeing the game also run a little poorly at the same time 
is pretty disappointing, just saying, you know? And uh, it really doesn't feel like it's a massive world to explore. It feels like it's about as massive as the worlds in Destiny 1, which was filled with, like, invisible walls and kill barriers and shit. And something tells me it's going to be quite linear and pretending to be bigger than what they're actually seemingly hyping it up to be. And, yeah, it feels like we got another Destiny 1 situation over here where the theme is, if you see it, you can go there. But when you actually fucking play the game, you're kind of underwhelmed. <laughs> I think that's how it's going to be. I don't feel this is actually going to be a Skyrim or Breath of the Wild style world. No, something tells me it's going to be a lot fucking smaller than that, uh, ultimately. Anyway, so you got some pistol action, right? And I kind of dig the new pistol. It looks all black like the Halo 2 pistol, which I fucking love dual wielding in that game. Uh, yeah, sure, the graphics are kind of cartoony, so everything looks a little shiny and plastic, but uh, whatever. Uh, I, I still dug that pistol, although I do have one problem with it, and this is just a real opinion nitpicky thing. Uh, it's the name. The, the name of the pistol fucking sucks ass, in my opinion. All right? Not the pistol, like in Halo 1. Not the Magnum, like in most Halo games. No. You know what the name is? The fucking sidekick. <laughs> That's the name? Really? Sidekick? Fucking Robin? <laughs> okay. Like, that's how you pay out homage to one of the coolest fucking guns? Maybe even the coolest guns uh, ever made in a video game? Like, 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 in Halo 1, the pistol is the gun. Like, the fucking gun. Like, the fucking gun for first-person shooter video games. When I think of the gun that kills the shit out of shit in first-person shooters, to me, it's the Halo 1 pistol. That thing is fucking dirtier than it looks, man. <laughs> that thing. I must have shot that fucking gun lovingly and compassionately so many times in that game. It's the go-to. It's the fucking gun. And in the hands of a lucky and skilled player, it's fucking disgustingly devastating. Like, fuck the BFG from Doom. <laughs> Give me the Halo 1 pistol, bitches. That's how I feel. So to, for it to be called the sidekick now, like, ah, whatever. Anyway, um, I guess I'm just being silly, but whatever, it's fine, I guess. So <laughs> you see the player get a hold of uh, the commando rifle then, right? The new gun. Uh, reminds me of the single shot BR from the Halo 2 City Invasion trailer, the, the, but this one seems to shoot more quickly, I guess. I dug it just fine, but I did notice something that worried me. The aiming. They sadly don't show much uh, zoom in aiming stuff in this trailer, which kind of pissed me off. Mostly just firing from the hip is what you see in this trailer, but if you watch fucking closely, when the player uses the commando rifle on some grunts that are about mid-range or whatever, if you watch closely for about a second or two, he uses the scope just briefly, just kind of taps it. And there it is, folks. Call of Duty, aim down sights, animation style, returning, just like from Halo fucking 5, just like in Destiny, just like in a lot of Rainbow Six games, just like in a lot of Battlefield games, like a lot of Call of Duty, every Call of Duty game, <laughs> just like every generic ass shooter you see these days. So fucking lame. That bothers me personally, all right? If you're okay with it, fine. If me, it bugs me. I really liked it better in the Bungie Halos. Want to zoom in? Jab down on R3, and instantly you're looking through a fucking scope. Get shot, you zoom out, and you have to zoom back in. You know, like, that's basically how it was. None of this fucking pulling the gun up to the middle of the screen gradually so you can be then looking down the sights as if your chin is resting on the butt of the gun or whatever. Like, I never really liked that kind of aiming. I guess some don't mind, but I fucking do. I want Halo to be Halo, and I want Call of Duty to go fuck itself, okay? That's, that's my opinion. Um, 
Whatever, though, that was just the commando. We'll see how aiming and zooming works with under other guns soon, I guess. Um, I remember uh, in Halo 5, there was the Halo 2 BR that you could unlock in certain modes. And when you used the scope, it behaved just like it did in Halo 2. That's fucking great. Good job doing stuff like that. It's a real shame all the fucking guns didn't feel that way in Halo 5. This Call of Duty style aiming animation bullshit fucking sucks ass in my opinion. Keep that in Call of Duty or whatever. Keep it out of Halo. That's how I feel. 343 doesn't want to listen to bitches like me, so uh, fine. Um, whatever. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got the Halo 5 aim down sights Call of Duty style shit returning to a degree. So that sucks. Same with, uh, I noticed Sprint, uh, Clamor, um, it seemed like uh, you could dash or slide a little bit, I'm not sure. It seemed like that kind of enhanced mobility feature is back. So a lot of these enhanced movement thingies, Spartan ability type things are returning from Halo 5 to this game. Not a big fan of that other stuff either, but whatever, just saying, that's, that's what we saw. I really don't like Clamor. That bugs me. It makes me feel like crouch jumping is less skillful, less required, less needed. and It eh, feels like it's making the game a little more noob friendly and making the game feel less rewarding to pull off these really hard jumps, you know. But whatever, whatever. I don't care that much. I'm not really a big Xbox guy anymore, you know. Uh, I, I, um, yeah, um... <coughs> Uh, something that really fucking bugged me that I hope you can fix or I, they change or something was the shield regeneration. Apparently, if you get hurt in this game, your shields will recharge. And while they're recharging, the corners of your screen become covered in like big, shiny, reflective, polygon-looking plate thingies. And it looks kind of cool, like, oh shit, you know, like this shiny and attractive ooh, but it's flashy as fuck and blinding and uh, it keeps you from seeing what's in your corners you know like i know i would fucking hate getting killed just because i couldn't see my target in my upper left corner of my hud you know just you know what i mean just saying that fucking sucks like that like, make it fade a bit more so I can still see good while regenerating shield. Thank you. That's all I ask. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, then the player then uses the commando rifle to take on some brutes who, who are back. The brutes are back. You know, they kind of look like Shrek or the Cabal from Destiny. You know? Not too bad, but not too great either. Uh, um... Yeah, speaking of which, uh, that commando rifle looks very Call of Duty or Destiny-ish with its, with its uh, aesthetics there. and uh, Whatever. And uh, you even got a mini-map that's kind of Breath of the Wild-ish, you know? And uh, yeah, this game totally feels like it's ripping on uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, Destiny, and finally Doom Eternal with the whole grapple hook thing in a lot of ways. Yeah, which brings me to the grapple hook interesting. I guess Master Chief is fucking Batman now, right? That must be one hell of a cable, right, guys? I mean, the Chief is like, what, a thousand pounds or something? Um, if he's carrying some grenades and some big weapons, like a rocket launcher and a fucking uh, brute hammer or something, I imagine he'd weigh like uh, <laughs> like a fucking 1,200 pounds? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. Badass cable. Um... Man, if he weighs that much, then, like, now that I think about it, why doesn't he make more no noise when he's, like, walking around and shit? <laughs> like, why doesn't he fall through the floor more often, right? Like, how does he even sneak up on grunts and elites and shit, right? Whatever. I got so many questions about that stupid grapple hook. And I heard it's going to be, like, a pickup for multiplayer or something like that. So that, I immediately think, when I hear that, I immediately think, what fucking gives 343? So am I going to be able to, like, grab Snipe and then be the first to grab the grapple hook also? And now all of a sudden I'm able to, like, grapple hook to a location outside of the map 
that no other player can get to because they don't have a grapple hook. Only I have a grapple hook. And now I can just be a bitch with the sniper rifle the whole match because I'm shooting motherfuckers from outside of the map from a safe location that I use to get to with the grappling hook. Like, that's fucking lame. <laughs> like, don't let that happen, man. I remember people would, like, super bounce outside of uh, Lockout in uh, Halo 2 in, like, SWAT matches or whatever, and they would just look down and kill everybody, and you, a lot of the time you wouldn't be able to put up with that player. So they better not do that shit. And uh, I know the 343 fanboys, they're going to tell me something like, 343 isn't that stupid and wouldn't let something like that happen, blah, blah, blah. Like, tell that to the fucking pro players. The, that Chinese team that got outside of the map that one time. and <laughs> Come on, man. Like, I even saw rumors that 343 would launch this game this year without multiplayer. Apparently, 343, though, they, they said those rumors were bullshit and the game will launch with multiplayer, so that's good, I guess. But yeah, I saw some 343 fanboy tell me, like, do you really think they would launch the game without multiplayer, bro? That's like, well, considering they seem to make unfinished products all the time, that wouldn't surprise me necessarily, my guy. Like, I think I have every right to feel worried <laughs> about that, considering the history record of 343. Just saying, man, Jesus. I swear, these 343 fanboys, my God, some of them, woo-wee. Licking that 343 shit log, I swear. Anyways. Yeah, Chief kills some brutes, and uh, he displays the use of the grapple hook. And uh, it makes me wonder, can two uh, grapple hook users grapple each other and fly at each other super hard and smash into each other and both die? Like a couple of Transformers from Michael Bay? <laughs> yeah. Like, we're talking about... A couple of tons crashing into each other here, you know? So, kind of curious. Uh, can I grapple hook a flying grenade out of the air and then bring it towards me and then hold it like a jackass and explode? Can that happen? <laughs> uh, can, can the grapple hook be shot and then, like, someone with an energy sword come over and cut the grappling hook cable? Can that happen? <laughs> and, or, like... Can I grapple hook something, and then as I'm pulling myself to it, can someone shoot the fucking line and make me fall to my death or something? <laughs> like, that would be hilarious. Like, that would kind of be the greatest game ever if you could do shit like that. Uh, oh, can I grapple hook my fucking teammates in multiplayer and then drag them towards me and then throw them off a cliff or something? <laughs> or can I do that to enemies? <laughs> can, can you do that? Like... Maybe it'll be the greatest game ever if you can do that. Just take my money right now, Microsoft, if that's the case. <laughs> all right, all right. Jokes aside. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, th then the player goes up an elevator, right? And they show off the overworld a little bit more. Some fun music plays, you know. Sh and, and uh, yeah, at least the elevator ride isn't as boring as a lot of Bungie Halo elevator rides. You get to see some pretty cool vistas. So that's nice, but unfortunately, as you go up this elevator, you see more frame rate dips, more texture uh, textures failing to load. And like five years, guys, five fucking years, and this is what you got? Oh God! Like Alana Pierce um, at IGN, she said that this is like an old demo and isn't a newer one. And when the game launches, a lot of this stuff is going to be fixed. So that's good, I guess. Hence the visual issues, but what the fuck, 343? Get a better looking demo to show us then, you know? Like, right? Come on. But then, at the same time, 343 said that this is new or something like that. So, like, I don't know who to trust here or what the fuck, but all I know is what I saw had some fucking problems, clearly. And and much of the visuals look worse than, like, Destiny, you know? Like like I said, you know, like, I'm, I'm not really digging this. I want to, but I'm not. Then we got some Covey guns. They seem to all, like, fire in bursts now. I guess that's a thing that they're doing now. So it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, you get to see another Phantom fly by, and yes, it looks under-detailed, and yes, it looks a little weird jostling around. Not a big deal, not a big deal, but 
I don't know. Maybe I have high fucking standards because I'm tired of this franchise sucking and it's 20 fucking 20. You know, get with the to goddamn times. Um, I love that the brutes will chuck uh, suicide grunts at you. I, I thought that was hilarious and fitting for their asshole personalities. Like, that's kind of cool. I dug that. One, one of the cubby guns that I saw that shoots, like, big red shit at you, like, I dug it, but I think it's a little bulky looking on the screen when you're using it, so maybe make it smaller or something, I don't know. Um, like, I'm okay with guns being big and taking up a lot of space in your HUD, if they're, like, a power weapon or something like that. Like, that kind of makes sense to me, you have this overpowered weapon of destruction, maybe they can nerf you a little bit by making your field of vision a little shittier, sure, but, um... Yeah, the gun seemed like me it was kind of mediocre, like not very powerful, like maybe on the level of like a, a concussion rifle or brute shot or something like that. So I think they should have made it a little smaller. Kind of looked a little stupid. Uh, but I don't know. I also noticed uh, the little ammo counter is gone and... Uh, you just have to read a digital number now. And I kind of miss the little ammo slot a animations that they did for each different gun in the games. I kind of miss that. You know, I kind of like seeing all the little tally marks on my AR go down as I start shooting. I, I love the iconic big four, big ass fucking bullet silhouettes from my sniper rifle. I kind of like that. And now it's gone. But whatever. It's not a big deal. I, I also noticed at some point, like, they talked about. They showed, like, upgrades in one of the corners of the screen, so I guess you'll be able to upgrade Master Chief as you progress through the campaign. Something like that is going on. They said there'd be RPG elements, so I think that's what they were talking about. I guess we'll get more details on that shit later. Um, but, yeah, um, then the player grapple hooks up to this one spot and uses the mauler on some grunts. So we got the mauler returning. It looks like it holds eight rounds instead of... Uh, what was it, five or six like it used to? And uh, that seems cool enough. It, it, when you shoot it, it has like a silencer kind of sound to it. So that's interesting. Kills a few grunts. And uh, uh, then a uh, player demonstrates uh, the use of the grappling hook to grab a fusion core and pull it towards him. And the Master Chief is holding this thing. And the animation looks similar to like how you would hold a bomb or a skull in multiplayer. And now he's holding this fusion core, and he fucking chucks it up at this machine gun turret grunt, who is fucking stupid and is shooting at something. I don't know. Not to, not the chief. Not even close. The AI is fucking dumb in this game. They need to fix that. And uh, yeah, chief throws this fucking thing at the at the turret, and I guess it did some damage. I don't know. And seems to finish it off at mid range with the mauler. So I guess maybe the mauler is effective at mid range, or. Maybe the, the turret was damaged so much that a mauler could finish it off at that range. I don't know. Anyway, uh, then a new fight ensues right there where a chief pops into that turret and guns down a few guys. That was kind of cool. Then he picks up the shotgun and just goes to town on the Covey shit bags. I, I really dug the shotgun. I, it sounded a little off, and I, I think it could have sounded a little more powerful, but looking at what it was doing <laughs> to these Coveys... That was sick. It was fucking shit up. Like a fucking slug launcher. Like, at one point, I think there was a brute trying to run for his life, and he just gets shot in the back, like, twice. And it it looked really painful. It looked cool. I, I, I dug a lot of that. I didn't have a very big problem with the shotgun. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it holds a lot of ammo before you have to really start putting shells into it. Like, I think it holds, like, 10 rounds, 12 rounds. I don't know. Eight? I don't know. But it seemed like he was just bounce, bounce, and he just wasn't stopping. Like, like maybe I'll watch it again. But, yeah, I, I dug the shotgun part for the most part. Then after that, uh, he grapple hooks onto a, a fucking uh, elite and sucks himself towards the elite to escape an explosion that's going off right next to him. And pow, punches out the elite. I thought that was kind of cool. And then the battle pretty much ends after he finishes off, like, a few grunts or whatever. And then... Uh, that's about it, really. And then, um, yeah, uh, he goes up into the cannon, and um, this little digital display of the the new villain shows up. Um, and well, let's just say I liked the villain, but for the wrong reasons. All right. 
Like I, I don't know what three four three is thinking. Um, uh, with this villain, because the villain doesn't intimidate me at all. I mean, like, what is this guy? Atriox Light? <laughs> like, who the fuck is this fucking nobody, bitch ass brute? <laughs> like, Tartarus's son or something? Like, what the fuck is this? I don't. Whatever. Anyway. You see, guys, remember what I said about not blaming me for being out of the loop with the story? So try not to blame me so much, okay? Like, blame 343 for the most part, okay? Blame them for the most part for not doing a good job with this franchise when it comes to the, fran uh, the fucking lore and keeping the story straight, okay? Blame them mostly for lying to us, misleading us, breaking their promises, being inconsistent, launching unfinished games time and time again, and still having the audacity to wallet rape us with microtransactions. Okay, don't fucking forget that. Anyway, uh, this brute, he, he gets a long little speech, right? Uh, uh, knowing Chief, uh, you would think that uh, uh, Chief would cut him off or whatever, but no, we, we, we get to uh, hear this guy go off for like a minute or so. Um <laughs> He's just going on and on about how he likes killing humanity and being a dick. <laughs> this little scene uh, just really kept going, you know. Like it was pretty silly, actually. Like he came off, of, he came off like the Mister T of brutes or whatever, you know. Like he reminded me of uh, like the Bat Dad from that South Park episode. You ever see that where Randy Marsh uh, has to fight him? <laughs> Over fucking, like, Little League Baseball or whatever. That shit was fucking funny. If you've never seen that, look that up. The Bat Dad from South Park, you know? Like, I can imagine this brute just being like, There ain't no way some green Spartan can take me down! Chief? Who's Chief? <laughs> like, like, I am the ultimate Little League Halo trash-talking father. I want you, Chief! I want you! <laughs> you know, like, like I, I can imagine him saying something like that. I'm starting to like this new villain, actually. Fucking hilarious. Like, okay. <laughs> Seriously, though, like, remember the Halo Reach trailer where you got to see uh, Noble Team for the first time? A and at the end of that trailer, you got, like, this random-ass blue elite in the dark. He pulls out an energy sword and fucking screams at the camera, and it's intimidating and creepy and fucking scary. And it's like, man, fuck these aliens, you know? Like, that somehow got me way more hyped with chills, with goosebumps. I was ready to whoop that fucking elite's ass after seeing that shit. You know, that got me interested in the game way more than this brute and his little speech about taking on the chief. And, you know, like, bear your fangs! Like, dude, he's a Spartan. He's a human, my guy. I, the chief doesn't have fangs. He has regular teeth, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe chief's a vampire, right? Maybe the, maybe he knows what he's talking about. I, I haven't seen Chief's teeth. Have you? Like, maybe the dude's got fangs. Maybe he's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I thought the choice of dialogue was kind of funny, you know. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan! <laughs> it's like, man, calm down, guy. Sheesh. Like, at one point, uh, like, like, he gets a little sad and sentimental. He's like, I've been alone. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, give that guy a hug. Like, this guy needs some serious therapy. Fuck. <laughs> Anyways, like, I don't know what's going on there. There's a lot to unpack, you know? <laughs> like, he seriously got some problems there. Like, I think there's a lot more going on with that character than we know. Just saying, <laughs> you know, like, Jesus. Anyways. I hope that he's just the distraction villain in the game and that the real villain is yet to be revealed, like Cortana, I guess. Cortana is apparently supposed to return with this game, so I'm sure there will be more to it than that. But anyway, so far I'm just saying the whole villain scene in this game doesn't look impressive. But that's to be expected, right? I mean, 343 sucks ass with the villain, so I won't be surprised if this fails out ultimately. Like, don't get me wrong, Bungie Halo games, they ain't that good at doing the villains either, but I'd argue they still did a better job. Anyway, um, at best, I think this brute guy, he might be fun enough like Tartarus from Halo 2. Uh, at best, that's what I think this is going to lead to. But, maybe, like I said, maybe he's just the side villain 
to distract us and then the greater threat gets revealed later i don't know we'll see right i guess when the game comes out right now it's just speculation overall uh i, I was being a bit of a halo fanboy for a second there i was hoping that 343 would do a great job and i would get to fall in love with the Halo Infinite game. I was hoping. Like, I, I, I didn't have that much hope, but there was like a very small part of me that was just like, oh, I really like want 343 to do a good job, you know? And my brother told me that I was being a fucking idiot for thinking that way. <laughs> so I thought about all the trash that we've been dealt from 343 over the past decade. And then I thought, yeah... I'm just being gullible and forgiving and being a fucking sucker. <laughs> like, they still probably suck, 343. Three, and after seeing this little campaign trailer thing, yeah, they got some shit to fix. Just saying, you know. So, yeah, I feel stupid for hoping 343 three would do a better job. I always have a little hope I'm just positive like that. I try for, I want things to work out good, you know, like. I don't like drama or things to fucking fail miserably. Like earlier, you know, Michael Brooks died and that guy was my idol in a lot of ways. And it's an awful thing that happened. And that makes me fucking miserable, man. So less of that kind of shit in my life, please. Thank you. So I'm trying to be more positive in this dark, shitty fucking 2020 year, you know. But, yeah, I got to be honest, you know, got to be straight up about my feelings. And sadly, I thought this trailer kind of sucked, honestly. And when I say that, I don't mean that it's the worst shit ever, okay? Like, don't think I'm just straight up shitting, you know, shitting on the game. It, it, it's just, it's not for me, you know? Also feel like, I also feel like I've grown out of Halo in a lot of ways, at, at least grown out of it enough to not really give that much of a shit about the new games from 343. Like, I'll still play some Halo 1 or Halo Reach from time to time on 360. I'm like, fuck yeah, I love that shit. I still got like 2,000 recorded hilarious clips and badass clips uh, to rewatch from, from Halo 3 and Halo Reach, you know. And I, I got like 50 level, I got like 5 level 50s from Halo 3 in ranked. Uh, I unlocked, like, all of the Bungie Halo game achievements since Reach. Not on just one, but two fucking accounts. Like, like, there's this one time in Rumble Pit for Halo 3, right? Where I, I asked the players in the pregame lobby if they would help me boost to, uh, to get the overkill achievement, right? And a lot of the time you meet folks who are down to help and they're pretty helpful. Especially if they want you to help them get it also, right? So that's cool and everything, but this one particular time, fucking uh, no one responded out of the other five players except for one prick. And he mouthed off to me like in this snarky, bitch-ass sort of way. He was all like, get it legit yourself, bro. You know, and I was just like, all right, fine, dick. Anyway, guess what the fuck happened? It was Guardian on uh, King of the Hill, Halo 3, Rumble Pit, six players. And with a few lucky grenades and some good headshots from the BR, fucking, I got the overkill myself, legit. And I also fucking won the game first place, too. So, suck it, bitches. It was one of the best feelings ever. And I've had many moments like that. Yeah, and it's just fucking good times. I recorded it. Maybe you can find it in my fucking videos if you look for it. Maybe I'll show it off. I don't know. I got so many videos. It would be hard to find. But... Yeah, good times, you know, like, good times. Speaking of which, though, I don't think, I don't think I'll have many good times with this new Halo game, okay? I'm just saying, it feels lame, it feels, feels like something I'm, I'm not a big fan of, you yeah? know? These 343 three Halo games, I'm telling you. But hey, the game's not even out yet. I barely keep up with Halo news these days anymore. I'm more out of the loop than I've ever been. Uh, so much about Xbox exclusives looks like shit to me compared to what we're seeing in the multi-platform realm, in the Sony world, in the Nintendo world. Like, 
in a way, I kind of like that. It puts things in perspective, and I don't have to waste money on Xbox stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, to me, right now, my gaming motto is, get everything except Xbox shit. <laughs> you know, like, like, the way I see it is Xbox Original and Xbox 360, hell yeah. Xbox One and this new Series X coming out, meh, that's how I feel about it. Maybe one day, if you find a good deal, I guess, uh, get this new Xbox shit, fine, I guess. But I still feel the PS4 is the better deal. Like Bloodborne, bitches. God of War 4, motherfuckers. Last of Us 2, cocksuckers. Spider-Man, PS4, fuck yeah. Like, the multi-plats, you know? Like, you can get those everywhere. And, and then the indie side-scrollers, to me, they, they f feel a lot better on a PlayStation D-pad, you know? That, that feels a lot more comfort comfortable come i can't say that word right now i need a drink where's my drink comfortable my god yeah and and then i got a mod that lets me use a 360 wired controller on my ps4 and i'm sure there'll be something like that for uh the ps5 so i really don't give a shit too much about controller preference and like like i said when i played last of us 2 the game kind of makes you play with a PS4 controller because you have to use that fucking touchpad thing. So that kind of pissed me off, honestly. But after I played Last of Us 2 with the PS4 controller for about a day, I got used to it. It was fine. You know, so it's not a big deal. Like, whatever. And it, it worked great. Um, hmm. Um, what was I saying? Um. So yeah, I, I, I don't really care about online gaming anymore. Been there, done that. Thought I'd miss it if I left it for a while. And well, I really don't. Maybe at first I kind of had a, a, the, the knack, oh man, I haven't played Reach Online in a month. I need to go back. Yeah, kind of felt that way. But I haven't played online games in like close to a year, really, it feels. And... I, don't get me wrong, it's always fun to blast some scrub-ass scrub bitches from time to time, but huh, life is short, been there, done that, and, and what am I supposed to do, play Halo 24-7 online like I used to, you know? I got half a million kills across fucking Halo 2, Halo 3, and Halo Reach. Like, that's a massive record. Fun stuff. But... Like I said, I got my records, I got my videos, I got my ranks, I got my achievements, I got my memories. That's good enough for me. Now, I'm in Halo Online Player Retirement. That's, that's what the fuck is going on with me. I don't think I'll ever go back to playing online against strangers or any real competitive kind of thing in gaming again. I, don't, I think those days are behind me. Maybe if a friend wants me to try out a new game and they have me try it out by playing it online or something like that, yeah, I guess I'll try it just to see what it's like and pretend I'm enjoying it like it's the greatest thing ever just to kind of humor my friend or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I don't really care for that kind of thing. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in my shoes and look at it from my point of view. I, I was into online gaming since around the time of StarCraft One in 1998. You know, like over 20 years ago, uh, a, a little before that, even actually with Command and Conquer, like kick-ass shit, man. So that's my background in online gaming. It, it basically started with the earlier Command and Conquer games. Um, so. <clears throat> yeah, um, but this today, fast forward to today, this new online world of expensive bullshit and crazy online communities and game after game after game of new online shit, left and right, left and right, they want you to buy this and that, fuck, no thanks. Also, like I said, been there, done that, so after 20-ish years of online competitive gaming, eh, I think now is a good time to retire, you know, especially because a lot of games today suck dick compared to the golden age. Yeah, and everybody who who has half a brain in the gaming world knows that the game, golden age of gaming was basically around 1990 to 2010. Between that time frame, roughly, is basically the greatest days of video games. Like, right now we're kind of in a in a stump slump here, you know. 
Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, for now, I'm just a retro gamer who likes the old stuff for the most part and just plays for single player and co-op experience and whatnot. And I like to relive the old games that I love, replaying uh, uh, good... Uh, right now, I'm replaying uh, Zelda 2 again, The Adventures of Link. A lot of people don't like that one, but hey, sorry, everybody has a different opinion. And in my opinion, I like it a lot. So how do you... How do you explain that? Like, some people say it's the most frustrating, shittiest Zelda game ever, and I see their point, but I like it a lot, actually. I think it's one of the better Zeldas, and it's one of the more challenging ones, and I think that's kind of why I do like it more. And Shit's complicated. What do you want? Anyway, I always come back to this one. It's always a quick, fun game to just get into and pick up and play, and it always feels satisfying to me. And Yeah, what do you want? That's me. You do you, I do me. Da, 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 da. So yeah, I, I I don't think I'll be getting the Xbox Series X or whatever the fuck the name of the new one is going to be called or whatever. They keep making shittier names if you ask me. My God. <laughs> oh well. PS5, uh, yeah, on its side it kind of looks like a vagina. And the controller looks like a Stormtrooper trooper, uh, the top visor helmet looking kind of thing or something. I can dig it. Fuck it. <laughs> so anyway, here's my plan. I'll get the PS5 next year sometime, or the year after that, uh, when they perfect the usual launch issues and lower the price and actually put some decent exclusives on the thing, a handful of them. That's usually the best time to jump in to the new consoles, right? I would argue the smart budget gamer would do something like that, and that's what I'm going to aim to do. But the new Xbox, on the other hand, just like the Xbox One, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, that's my opinion, and that's just how I roll. Like, I want to switch too, but I'm hoping they make a new model that runs better. So, I kind of feel like a dumb bitch for waiting, because I don't know if they're ever going to do this. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyway, money's a little tight right now this year, because fuck this year um but yeah we'll see anyway in, in all fairness like i know i was kind of harsh on 343 just now with the with this new trailer and i'm always pretty harsh on 343 and like it might seem like i'm overdoing it and i can understand that but at the same time it feels like maybe i'm not harsh enough because they have done some fucked up shit huh <sighs> It's so conflicting. You, you never know exactly how where to land and how accurate you need to be in your criticisms. I know the COVID has done fucked us all over, some more than worse. Like, my shop right now is making, like, half as much money this year as it did last year. So, even me, someone who who's basically a, a one percenter, like, I'm not going to lie, guys. Financially, uh, I believe I'm in the one percent or close to it. In, um, so, yeah, call me a rich asshole one percenter if you want. You wouldn't be completely inaccurate. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, if I lost my shop or if I stopped making good money, like, yeah, in just a few years, I would be back to, like, like lower middle class poor in no time. So hopefully this COVID shit does, doesn't get a lot worse next year and then the year after that, right? Hopefully it starts getting better sometime eventually in a few months i'm hoping but hey i can't predict the future i know it's got i'm pretty fucking sure that i can just say that i know it's going to get worse before it gets better especially because our dumbass fucking leader wants to send kids back to school and kids are typically germ vessels and this ain't gonna go down smoothly anyway this is complicated um so yeah such is life so yeah uh 343, three, they've hurt us a good bit so far, and it looks like they're going to hurt us a bit more. Um, um, the, the, the COVID, you know, like it's it's hurting everybody, and I, I feel like it's hurt 343 three in a lot of ways, and um, it's hurt all of us, you know. So just hang in there, everyone. Tough fucking times, I know. I'm having some trouble. Shit. Uh and the election against the the fantafascist dipshit fuck up over here, you know, 
uh, sun-kissed supremacist over here, uh, triple thin skin, like, <laughs> things are going to get messy, you know, and, uh, and, and when I say that, I mean, like, more messy than they already are, which is fucked to say in the least, like, man, tr fuck Trimps America, you know, like, Trimp, dude, this is a dumpster fire of dumbness, is what this is. Like, we got, we right now in America, our leader, we got the moron version of Hitler. That's what the fuck we got here. Like, I'm getting fucking tired of this dumbass fucking, like, even though he makes me laugh, like, that shit's funny, right? I mean, what was it? Person, woman, man, TV camera, <laughs> or, oh, Jesus. God damn. Oh, what is he doing? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> How did it go? I can't even remember because I don't care. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. <laughs> like, oh, God. What does that mean? What does that matter? Like, why don't you just not be an asshole? Like, you can be a stupid fuck. I don't care. But how about not be an asshole? Everything you do, you fuck it all up, it seems. My God. You know? Like, I can understand people being ignorant and whatnot. You, you can't be smart about everything, you know? And intelligence is a hard thing to measure, you know? Like, how strong is somebody? You can measure that based on how much they can lift. How fast is somebody? You can measure that based on how quickly they can move. How smart someone is, that's deep. Like, some people are really smart about certain things and really fucking dumb about other things. Like, I'm really smart about the details and mechanics and judgments and critiques about the Bungie Halo games. I lived and breathed those fucking things. I experienced it more than most. So I'm like an expert at talking about that shit, but do I understand uh, ballet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not one fucking bit. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh... Mm. Yeah, like that dude was, uh, that Trump bitch, he was wishing well uh, a lady who is a child sex trafficker, rapist, kidnapper. He wished her well. Like, what the fuck? This shit is weird. This shit is weird, man. This is insane. Uh, so, yeah, guys. Um, anyway, Halo kind of sucks right now, still. <laughs> if you're a 343 fanboy type who likes, to, who likes this shit, then I guess I just... Don't know how your brain works, but hey, whatever. Like, if you like it, then that's good for you. For me, I'm not happy enough. For me, Halo's future and present right now is still pretty crappy to me, and I only like playing the old Bungie Halo games on my 360, you know? That's that's all I really do in regards to Halo games now. Better luck with Halo 6 or 7 or whatever the fuck it's going to be called next. Because <laughs> th this, this Halo Infinite thing doesn't look... Like, it's impressing me. I'm just saying. Not really. Uh, all right. Fine. All right. Th fine, 343 fanboys. I'll just shut the fuck up for now and stop being so offensive. All right. I'm sorry. I'm being a dick to you guys in a lot of ways. You got to forgive me. This year has been real shit. And uh, it makes things a little bit emotional right now, you know? And... Uh, I know in the past I've been a huge asshole, like overly disgusting towards you guys. Like, like you guys just like a video game a lot. <laughs> and that doesn't give me the right to treat you guys like total dog shit, despite you guys sometimes acting that way towards me. Still doesn't make it right, you know? Like, so, I'm trying to be better. I'm not perfect. I fuck up. I cross the line. But I'm, I'm trying to be better, you know? Like... Michael Brooks just died, my idol, you know, and uh, he he said, you know, I may not I may not like everybody, but I try to love everyone. And he said, be kind with people, be ruthless with systems. You know, he said wonderful things like that, you know. And uh, the guy he really admired, Lula, over there in Brazil, great guy. He said that you can, he said something, I don't remember the exact quote, but like you can stomp a few flowers, but you won't stop the coming of spring. You know, like beautiful quotes, 
really memorable, you know, really good. Uh, yeah, I'm saying it's really memorable, and I couldn't remember the exact same. <laughs> okay, I get it. My memory's not the greatest, okay? <laughs> Give me a break. But, like, those are just wonderful words is my point. And these guys lived by those words, and uh, it, it means a lot, especially when the chips are down and you're depressed, you're angry, you're frustrated, you're sad, you're confused. You know, like, it's times like that when you look to those people who say those things and not just say them, but live by those things, you know? Like, it makes you, it gives you hope. Not that fake-ass hope and changey shit that Obama preached. No, you know, like, real hope, you know? Like, motivation to get out there and make a difference. Do something nice for people. Do some selfless acts. Even sometimes... Like, you, you do something nice for somebody, and you're doing it to get something out of it. Yeah, even if that's what you're doing, that's a, that's fine, too. You know? That's fine, too. You're still helping. You know? Like, like even if I, like, I don't know, make a funny face, and a baby sees my goofy face and starts laughing. That That's doing something nice. If I go out there and I plant a tree, you know, uh, that's doing something nice. You know? And... Uh, maybe what I'm getting out of it isn't anything more than just self-satisfaction. Like, oh, I did something nice. I feel good about myself today. I feel less guilty, you know? Something like that. You could argue that, oh, you're just doing it to feel good about yourself or less guilty. What's wrong with that? What's fucking wrong with that? Nothing. It's a win-win. What's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. I, I'm sick and fucking tired of negative Nancy motherfuckers who say, Oh, you're only doing so-and-so nice thing to get something out of it for yourself. And it's like, not really. And not all the time, not really. You know, like, come on, man. Come on. Don't be a, don't be a Jordan Peterson. Don't be a lobster boy. That guy's a fucking idiot. Any, <laughs> anyways, um... So, uh, yeah, guys, um, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, I, the, the Halo Infinite gameplay trailer there. I didn't like it very much. Uh, I don't know what they can do with what they showed me that would make me a fan of Halo again like I was back in the day. Okay? I, I feel like I'm being a dick who's a little too picky, but like... Like I said, at the same time, the Bungie Halos offered me way better experiences, is all I'm saying. Less wallet rape, more fun factor and replay value. That's what they gave me. That's what 343 doesn't do nearly as good of a job at. And that's what matters most to me. And, and uh, I know that fun factor is largely an opinion-based thing, but hey, that we're, this, is, this is me we're talking about here. You know, I'm just talking about me here, all right? Like, I just prefer the feel... Of the Bungie Halo games more overall, stuff that the 343 Halos do bugs me more. Right? That's all. You know, if you tossed a pile of 343 Halo games at me, and you tossed a pile of Bungie Halo games at me, and you made me choose one out of, the, out of both piles, every fucking time it's going to be a Bungie Halo game. Simple as that. I can't think of a better way to... To present my stance on Halo right now than that. Anyway, it's hard expressing yourself, you know. It can be complicated. You might sound confusing and weird like I usually do. So I apologize. But, you know, I do these videos to just sort of rant and vent and uh, be weird and goofy. And uh, I'd probably make a good point here and there. Anyway, uh, whatever. I wish 343 the best, as in... I hope they one day finally make a game I like <laughs> a lot. Um, uh, Halo Anniversary, I like that one a good bit. Halo 4, I like half liked it, half didn't. Uh, Halo 5 and Halo Wars 2, mostly did not like. And uh, yeah, this looks like something that I'll mostly not like either, or half like, half not like, which means at best... I'll get it half price one day if I ever feel like picking up the new Xbox one day. Which so far I don't have any fucking plans on doing as of right now or over the next year probably. So that's where I stand, alright? Um, 
But yeah, I, like, hey, you know, it's not all bad. At least they made that decent remaster thingy with Halo 1 Anniversary in 2011, right? I talked about that just now. I, I got that on my 360. I fucking love it. I, I replay it from time to time. The, the grenade skull that makes the explosions, like, much dramatic, much more dramatic and bigger, and, and the infinite ammo skull, like, it just made the playthrough, like, so much more intense, you know? Like, that shit was crazy. Some of the explosions got a little out of hand. It was great. But, yeah, not everything about 343 totally blows. But I still don't really dig them as the head honchos running the Halo franchise. But it's whatever, though. You know, I've been playing other games, taking care of the animals, working, moving on with life, getting into other projects, you know, musical instruments and stuff. The usual. Still got tons of great games I haven't even given a chance yet, you know? Crazy. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, tell your parents that you love them. Uh, take care of each other. Ha help each other out and all that jazz. Try to do your best to do the right thing. Try not to hurt other people, you know? I know that's rich coming from a guy like me who's been extremely vulgar and shitty. Uh, and I still kind of do it sometimes, and then I feel bad and stupid and... That sucks. Trying to be better, you know, it's not easy. Uh, you know, try taking care of animals, you know, do some gardening, plant some trees, you know, like, like, times are tough right now, you know. So, yeah, everyone, good luck, and yes, luck is totally a thing. Ellie from Last of Us 2, she's a crazy bitch. <laughs> like, only fools don't believe in luck. You can, you can't see everything coming at you in life, okay? You just can't, like. We're all wrong about something. You can't know everything. And because of that alone, it's likely to be something that's uncontrollable that ends up doing you in one day, you know? Like, like a fucking meteorite the size of a marble could crash through this fucking house right now and break through the roof and put a hole in my head and destroy my brain right now, for all we know. It's happened before, I think, probably. <laughs> But yeah, uh, just trust me, all right? Luck is a thing, guys. Getting shot, getting run over, getting sick or dying, or what, it's not always your fault. It's not always someone's fault or whatever. Like, it, it, Or it's not always someone on purpose doing it. Accidents happen. Life is a tricky thing to hold on to, is my point, okay? Just think about it. No one lives forever, after all, and a lot of time life gets cut short, you know? So just, just hang in there, folks, is all I can say. And, and remember... Um, I used to be a complete screw-up, and now I'm less of one, <laughs> but I'm definitely a better human being than I used to be. We're all kind of screw-ups in a way when you think about it, though, right? You know, like, nobody's perfect, so let's all stop messing around and try to work together more, right? At least for now, during this dark fucking year, right? Just saying. Like, like Michael Brooks said, you know, I may not like everyone, but I try to love everyone. Like, yeah, man, good stuff. I, I'm not sure if Brooks said this quote, but he, he did use it a few times, I think. Uh, he said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Like, that's a great line, you know. Anyway, thank you for everything, Michael Brooks. You helped a lot of us out, including myself. We owe you just about everything. We'll fucking miss you. And if there is some sort of afterlife thingy <laughs> out there, then uh, you just wait, Michael Brooks. We'll see you soon enough. And, um, yeah, man, like, yeah. So, yeah, this is my, uh, well, it's not my guitar. It used to be my guitar. It's an acoustic. Um, Washburn. It's pretty cheapo. It's like a $100 guitar, maybe a 200 at full price, brand new. Uh, it's okay. But um, I, I don't really care for acoustics, so I gave it to my buddy Glenn. But I brought it back to the house to change the strings. Put some Ernie Ball. Uh aluminum bronze Ernie Ball 10 gauge strings on it and I like them okay they're not bad I'm experimenting with different acoustic guitar strings right now see which ones I like the best I think the Daddario's put out the best ones but these Ernie Ball bitches right here 
they're not too bad. Yeah, I'm going to give this guitar back to him uh, in a few days. I just wanted to clean it up and make it play a little better and all that shit. Sorry. Always got a guitar in these videos, so I just figured I'd mention it. <laughs> Anyways, cool shit, guys. How long is this fucking video? An hour and 30 minutes. God damn it. I was hoping it would be like 30 minutes, but... Well, what are you going to do? Anyway, that's my take on life philosophy crap. A little bit of that I spewed here. I'm not the greatest at that shit, but, you know, I'm trying to be positive, trying to uplift folks, you know, get people who actually watch my bitch ass. The few of you who do, I appreciate it. And um, I hope you guys gain positivity from me and, and uh, admire some of the things I say. Maybe not me, myself, but some of the things I say. I hope you... Take it seriously and try to be a better human being, more positive. Um, being depressed and angry and confused and being that all the time sucks. I know what that's like. I've been there. And these days, I'm that way less. And my life has been better than ever. Even, it, even though this year in particular is a real downer. I get it. But you know what I'm saying. You guys understand. I'm just trying to, trying to help, you know. And hop on Patreon and donate um, some decent people um, some money who, who, who do some good work. You know, there's a lot of channels out there that put in a lot of work and effort, and they're really struggling to get by. And if you can afford to help them out just a little bit, it does matter. It, it does matter. So it does help. So if you can, fucking do it. I did it recently and have been doing it more recently. And I feel a lot better at about myself. I feel like I matter more, you know? I feel like if I disappeared, that would suck <laughs> for other people, you know? that I feel like I'm part of people's lives, more so than ever, you know? So that's a good feeling, and if you don't have that in your life, I think you should strive to get that kind of feeling. Um, and... Uh, I think I was going to say one last thing, but I forgot. I'll probably say it in the next video or whatever. But, yeah, cool shit, guys. Um, take care of yourselves and all that jazz, you know. Try to be positive. Yeah, I'm repeating myself at this point. Um, Eric Lee, I haven't talked to you in like a month, it feels. I think I pissed you off, and I think you hate me now, and I think you don't want to talk to me anymore, and I think that fucking sucks because... Uh, I still love you, man, and I think you're great, and I miss our conversations, and uh, anyway, uh, get back to me as soon as you can, all right? Anyway, uh, good shit, everybody. I'll see you later.